This is preparation of frozen fasciolata allograft. Uh, we've already rolled the graft to kind of determine its consistency and to look at it to see where we can find the most uniform segment. I've determined the graft length intraoperatively, the length of the uh, defect on the acetabulum, and then overestimating this so that I could cut off the excess in the joint. There aren't really set parameters for the width of this graft. It all depends on the graft material you have and its thickness. In general, you don't want to use the thinnest section. You also don't want to use the thickest section either. It's sort of the in-between zone. And then you want to look at the shiny side of the graft to determine which side aesthetically or which section aesthetically is going to look the best once it's finally rolled. And so at this point, we're just trimming the excess graft to get our defined rectangle so that we can ultimately tubularize this to get a 5 to 6 millimeter diameter graft. The goal for me is 5 to 6 millimeters in diameter. This looks the best and this seems to work the best as well. The larger the graft, the easier it will be to get a seal. The only problem is, as the graft gets larger, it's harder to get adequate compression such that you can get the graft to incorporate. The advantage of a smaller graft is that you should be able to compress it adequately so that it can heal and incorporate. The downside is it makes obtaining the seal with the femoral head a little bit more challenging. At this point, I'm rolling the graft in thirds to try and determine what my final uh, shape is going to be before we do the compressive running stitch. And you can see I folded it into thirds and now I'm rolling the graft. I'm looking at the graft to try and see if it's uniform all the way across and it's the right size. Once I'm happy with that, and it usually compresses by about a millimeter or two, then I basically put accordion stitches on either side of the graft to begin the process of making it into a cylinder. This is a 2-0 suture, vicral, on an SH needle. So more of a tapered needle so it doesn't cut the graft. We basically just go uh, along the edge of the graft while someone holds the graft uh, in the center and take small bites across. What this does is it functionally bunches up the graft when you tie it so that it can then be turned into a cylinder. The way it's held here uh, with the Adson forceps on the edge just helps this making it a nice uh, uniform cylinder on the edge. These two sutures then functionally become the holding sutures so that you can put it on the uh, graft master. Once the knot is tied, you then pass it through the invagination in the end of the graft to get the suture on the other side. That just makes for a nice uniform uh, tensioning stitch when you place it in the graft master. It also buries the knot, so aesthetically it makes the graft look nice as well. Now I test it again. I test it several times uh, through this process to make sure that we're nice and uniform, that the cylindrical shape will be uniform throughout, uh, and that it's the appropriate size. This can be altered during the procedure. You can always subtract some of the graft on the inside or add to the inside as well if you feel that your graft is not the perfect size. This is just showing a running suture that we do from one side to the other. And so bites are taken on the outside of uh, the cylinder coming to the center and then taking another bite on the other side. This running suture is non-locking uh, and provides a nice compression of the graft as you go across. The key is you want to take your time with this. You really want the graft to be perfect because if it's loose or if it's not um, uh, uniform, you will deal with these problems later. You want the graft to be nice and compacted uh, because then it's workable inside of the joint and won't fray on you.
You can see my hand has come into the field now and I'm assessing that everything is uniform and that the size is right. I'm looking now for a final graph diameter of about five to six millimeters depending on the particular acetabular rim that I'm working on. Five and a half millimeters seems to be the perfect size in most situations. Again, too large a graft will always give you a seal. It's just hard to get it compressed. And again, too small a graft is easy to get adequately compressed for uh, uh, incorporation, but a little bit more challenging uh, to obtain a seal. Uh, and so your anchor position in these situations is even more important. Uh, this suture uh, then goes um, uh, from one end uh, to the other end and then is tied to itself. Then you have your finished graft product. I have uh, experimented with several different grafts through time. I have found fascia lata to be the more durable of the grafts that I've worked with, uh, the least prone to swelling uh, and fraying inside of the joint. But I can't emphasize enough how important it is to be very highly meticulous with your graft preparation. I use the sutures that we have on either end of the graft to then hold it while I place the suture through the graft for fixation to my most anterior inferior anchor to be pulled into the joint. Now that the knot is secured, I'm going to pass the suture to the opposite end of that knot. I'm then going to cut the holding sutures that were used in the graft preparation. Now I'll pull up on the post to shuttle the graft into the joint. Skipping steps during this aspect of the procedure or going fast through this procedure and ending up with a non-uniform graft that's loose um, uh, and poorly prepared uh, will affect your final aesthetic product and will also make working with it um, uh, inside of the joint increasingly more difficult. Thank you.